Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Dinner Church. Um, we just had an awesome dinner um, with like a whole bunch of like, um, what are those called, Brian? What did we eat? Enchiladas, beef enchiladas. And the only thing that I can say about it is, wow, they were absolutely amazing. Um, am I right, everybody? Amen? Really, really good stuff. Um, I, I hear applauding going on in the background. Um, it's true. It was just absolutely phenomenal. So we had a computer little goof up, but I think, yeah, we're good. We're back online. So welcome, guys. Glad that you guys are here. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of in that rut where I... I've been saying the same thing um, several times now in a row, but um, the weather outside is beautiful today. Um, guys, y'all could have gone out and been playing golf or, um, I don't know, mowing the grass. Swimming, yes, yeah, swimming. Those of you who have uh, kids with in-ground heated swimming pools, all that kinds of good stuff, um, you guys have a lot of choices and options. And... Um, guys, please, uh, it doesn't escape me that you would choose to come and be in the house of the Lord and um, eat an awesome meal, uh, but also come and look in God's Word and get fed. I, I appreciate that so much. Um, we live in a world that's kind of hard uh, to make, you know, good choices all the time. Um, I think you guys made an awesome choice coming tonight. And um, it's awesome to see so many of our little kids. Um, it seems like seems like every couple of weeks right now, we're seeing more and more little kids. And uh, that's just like totally awesome. Everyone say, woohoo, woohoo, that's good. And, um, and everything else. I'm, yeah, somebody, Randy turned into an owl back there. Yeah, that's good. And you did good, Randy. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just trying not to go into a coma or something by eating all that good food right now still. Hey, listen, I do have a couple of videos that I want to show you. I'm going to show you guys the first one here in just a second. If you would make sure that volume's turned up pretty good back there, that would be awesome. But you've been hearing me talk an awful lot about the church app. And I know that for some of you, it's like, ah, you know what, man, I, I am just not, you know, techno tech, technology driven or whatever. And I absolutely get that. Hey, I just see Deanna Montgomery. Hi, Deanna. You're like rocking my world coming out tonight. You missed it though. You, you, you. We're gonna take some enchiladas. You're gonna get to take some enchiladas home because they were ridiculously awesome. Good. Okay. So anyway, I'm gonna shut up and um, the video is gonna be on the big screen. Hopefully you can see it. You may have to scoot a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and show that video about the uh, church app, and we'll come back and say a few more things about it in a minute. This is a quick video to introduce you to our church's phone app. And I know for some of you, your cell phones can be quite intimidating. I get it, I really do. But I promise, this isn't rocket science. And we can gladly and easily show you how to become a pro at using your phone and accessing the church app. If your phone is anything like mine, the main screen probably looks something like this. Notice icon number Each one is my wife. Icons represent different apps or contacts which I can tap on. The icon next to the arrow is for our church app. And when I tap on it, the app opens up and looks like this. Pretty cool, isn't it? There are several great things within our app. For example, there's the morning wake up call. You can give your offerings and your tithes also through the church app. There is a way for you to watch the past Sunday morning sermon message, as well as the past Wednesday dinner church service. There is a way for you to watch live events taking place at church. You can scroll down and find the list of our most current prayer requests. There's also a free Bible that you can access on our app, which you can take and read practically anywhere. And also, there is a way for you to view the church's calendar and upcoming events. Now, again, it may feel a bit intimidating, but it really isn't. Upon opening your app, 
Let's say that you want to view your daily morning wake up call, which is a phenomenal daily devotional, I should add. You can read it or you can simply listen to it. To access the, the morning wake up call, simply tap the icon. And when it opens, it looks like this. And from here, you can simply tap on the small play button to listen to it. Or if you want, you can read it. And you can do so by simply scrolling down and reading through the devotional. And when you are done, you can tap the back button to go back. You may also want to do other things on the church app. Like, for example, maybe you want to access and look at the different prayer requests for the church. Simply tap on the prayer concerns icon. It will open and it will look something like this. And again, you can scroll up and down to see all of the different prayer requests. Once done, you simply press the back button to go back. You can simply click on any of the icons and explore the various ministry tools that are available on this app. If you are unfamiliar with how to get the app on your phone, just simply ask us. It only takes about two minutes and then you will have this powerful app that you can use to access almost anything church related. This is a great tool and we want to help you with it. It will quickly become something very easy for you to use, I promise. Thanks for checking it out. So I was shocked when my dad started using Facebook years and years ago. I sat there and I thought to myself, how on earth did my dad get to the place where he figured out how to use Facebook? Mom, were you a little bit surprised by that? Because he, you know, computers, he and computers really don't get along really well, but he figured it out. And he's been able to maneuver through it and, until his account got hacked right before he went to Roatan and um, he had to open up another one. But guys, I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of you know how to do social media. If you can do social media, which is five times harder than this app, believe me, you can do this app really easy. Now, I wanna also say about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, we started, we, we switched some things around and we, we did some updates on the app and some updates on the website, a lot of that stuff. And we changed the morning devotional to this, this seedbed app, this morning wake up call. Um, I don't know. I can't, I guess I can monitor. There are like some statistics I can go in and see how the analytics are going on our, on our app and website. I haven't really done that yet, but I will tell you this in the last three days, in just the last three days, I think I've had five people either call me, text me or get a hold of me some other way or whatever and tell me, Oh, wow, Pastor Jeff, I love, I absolutely love the morning wake up call. I love this. It's, it's, it's awesome. I get in my car to go to work. I press play. I listen to it. And then usually when I, I'm, I'm at work and I'm in the parking lot, I will go back and I will read it through a second time. And I've had several people say, this is phenomenal. And guys, I got to tell you, I believe it is. You've heard me say as well that, um, You've heard me use a couple of different illustrations. When you're in high school, when you're in high school and you're a freshman and you have to take um, freshman English, you know, there's usually a number that's associated with that class. And that number normally begins with a what if it's a freshman class? Begins with a one. Sophomores, number two, you know, then you have 300 classes, 400 classes, you go to grad school, five, six, seven, 800 classes, and so forth. Guys, this is not a 100 level devotional, and I get it. it. I mean, it's just not. I mean, there is some real meat here. 
And I love this. I love this. This ministers to me probably more than any other devotional, daily devotional that I've ever used in my life. And I bet you when you're looking at it at first, like, well, this is kind of strange. Okay, well, let's pray our prayer of supplication. Well, what does that word even mean? I don't know. Father, um, Jesus, uh, I am in you and you are in me. Okay, now we're getting kind of new age. I, I, I get it. It probably feels a little, maybe a little bit strange. Probably does. But I'm going to tell you, check it out. Go through it. Try it for a number of days. I, I think what you're going to find is like, wow, this, this is this is some really really profound stuff. I, I, I've been, I, you know, Amy and I. Amy didn't go to the conference with me, but I, I went to one of their conferences a number of years ago when they started this. And for a number of months, uh, this was a few years ago, I was doing these devotionals, and then something happened, and I, I switched off to something else. And then Amy would say, oh, Jeff, did you read this, the, the morning wake-up call today? He says, no, I've been, I've been using other things, reading other things. Oh, you ought to check it out. And sometimes I would. But I don't know, about a month ago, maybe not quite even a month ago, something, something happened, and, and I decided to go back and, and start doing that again. And I'm like, this is, this is just amazing. And I wondered if they would make it available to us like like something that we could use and put on our app and so i called them it took three days to get a hold of them there are there are like tens of thousands of people that anyway but they said yeah go for it knock yourself out and so we got to to put this on our platform for absolutely free and they're giving us tons and tons and tons of other resources that you'll hear me talk about down the road as well but i'm just saying to you guys um you can access, Amy and I, usually one of us will um, send out the, the wake-up call at around 7 o'clock in the morning, okay? If you um, are up, and I know David Woods is a really early bird, and so um, if you're up and you're like, oh, he hasn't sent the, the wake-up call yet, all you have to do is press the button on that phone and then drag your finger down and it will refresh and it'll give you the new date. What I want to do is I want to, you, you, you know how they talk about, don't you dare make them click an extra time. If they're under 30, if you make them click more than three times, they're not even going to do it. They're going to some other page. You've heard that, right? And, and it's true. I'm trying to spare people of clicks. So I wait until it's posted. I think they post it like at one in the morning. Well, I'm not getting up at one in the morning, but I will get up at seven. And I'll go and I'll grab the actual link and I'll embed it in our app to save you guys a click. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful pastor and pastor's wife that you guys have? Uh, I jest. Um, guys, another thing. Um, we have to become a church more and more and more of prayer. Prayer changes things. Um, prayer can, can soften even the hardest heart. And um, those that... that that how do I say this well? Prayer has a way of burning through the thickest, darkest fog to the point where they can see light and see things for as they are and not as the devil would want us to see. Prayer is so important. And so on this app, every time that we get a prayer request, and I got a couple today, um, like just shortly ago. Um, we will update it. I've been here, and I've not updated it, but I can just go and scroll down and see where it says prayer concerns and hit that thing, and boom, there they are. First one on the list, um, Ted Hartman. And if you have your phones and you have that app, I would so encourage you to have your phone out. You can, you can use the Bible. You can click on that little Bible thing, and you can read right there along. You know, I love paper Bibles. I, I really, really do. But a phone app is, is awesome. But you can go, and you can look. And guys, I'm telling you, while you're warming your car up, we don't do that right now this time of year. Um, I'm a little, a little behind. But, you know, when you get in your car and you start your car up in the morning, you, know, you could open it up, open up this app while you're sitting there, getting ready to put your seatbelt on, and scan through this really quickly. You could find four or five prayer requests and have them in mind. Set your, your app down. Don't look at your app while you're driving, but drive and pray for those four or five people. You could do the same thing when you drive home. 
guys, listen to me. I am telling you, you, my dad knows that the thing, if you want to make me like, no, no, not, not you. I'll say it this way. If I'm going to get grumpy or if I'm going to become frustrated or disappointed, most likely it's because I was not able to accomplish something that, that I wanted to accomplish. I am, I'm sorry, if, if, but I am so task-driven. And that's not necessarily a great fit, you know, for a pastor. But I am. I'm task-driven. You know, I go to bed and I'm like, can I feel good about all the things that I got done today? You know, and, and you know, ministry, you know, it can be task. I, I digress. But, but, but guys, here's my thing before I, I lose what I'm, I'm trying to say. You want to make eternal changes in the world? Pray. Um, you want to be like... Super Joe Awesome Dad, pray. You want to be like Super Joe Awesome Grandma, or Joan Grandma, <laughs> not Joe, but Joan. Um, you want to be an awesome grandma, pray. You, you, you want to um, be influential to the people that you work with, pray. You, 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 you want to pray for uh, a spouse. You want to encourage a spouse and be there for a spouse who's gone through three different full seasons of radiation, you pray, you pray. You want to see people's lives get transformed? I, I, I pray almost, I bet you it's not even almost. I'm pretty much praying absolutely every single day for the girl that my son will marry, even though I doubt that he's even met her yet. He's not dating. I'm not even so sure he's ever, I shouldn't say that. Um, Kiss the girl, but um, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, but I pray for this girl. I don't even know her. I remember praying for my kids even before I was married. Prayer is so important. Use that phone app, please. That prayer app, please, please, please do that. In the morning, you can click on it. If you're really good with notifications and stuff like that, at seven o'clock or shortly thereafter or before, you'll get a notification. And you can go to it that way, but you can also go to it just by clicking on it. Do you have any questions about the, about the app? Here's the thing. If you do not have the app on your phone, would you please, please let us help you get that app on your phone? There are like 175 people now that have the app on their phones from all over the place. We have people in different states that, that, that go to our app and watch our services online on their phones. Do you know that? We do. We do. We have people, um, help me out, uh, David, the, the young couple, um, he's a realtor, and um, they moved down to Florida, and um, he had that, that the, the, the pressure in his brain, the fluid built up really, really high, and they, yeah, the Summers, Barry and Angie Summers, they, they watch us uh, on their app or on the website at different times. Um, do that, do that. And I want to say another thing as well, and I'll, get, I'll be done with this and we'll move on. Um, we relaunched our Facebook page. Most likely, you probably got, if you're on Facebook at all, and, and we're, we're like friends or something like that, you probably got a, a, say, a thing saying, hey, you should check out and like our Facebook page. Um, if you did, awesome. And if you got that and you didn't uh, like our Facebook page, shame. No, 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 I'm just kidding. No shame. But I would love for you to do that. Check it out. Because what we're trying to do is we are trying to put things on there almost daily. And updates, videos, um, things that are encouraging, all kinds of stuff. I would love for you to go on there, post things on there. Okay, make it about church. You know, you have your own Facebook page where you can say, hey, look, my dog, he learned how to use the toilet. Uh, that's great. But you don't want to put that on face on our church's, you know, Facebook page or whatever, you know. But um, you, you can put prayer requests, all those kinds of things. I would love that. Same thing with the school. Same thing with the school. You know, that, that, is, that is our ministry. We, we are partners side by side. Jody and I, we, we're like, yep, this is my church. And you know, she's on Continental Cruise right now. Um, okay, anyway, but um, lucky her. So um, that's really all I got to say about that. Do you have any questions about any of that? Come and see me um, and we'll, we'll help you figure that out. Now, another thing that we try to do every Wednesday is I try to show you a video of some really awesome examples of just showing love. I found two. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not just going to show one because it's just so fast. 
And so, and I saw two, and I'm like, I want to show two of them. So I put them both on there. And if you have a problem with that, and I know you don't have a problem with that, um, you know, anyway, um, he's going to show it on the big screen again. So if you need to turn your neck or whatever to see it or whatever, that's fine. It's going to go fast, less than a minute, uh, but go ahead and check it out. I need grandkids so bad I cannot even see straight. Oh, I love that. Oh, and I love this. Do you see? The road is completely flooded. It's got like five inches of water. Oh, I love that. there they are out there you just need to look and find them okay you just need to look and find them okay they are out there um and i get it the music that i put that that's really really sappy i'm looking for better music so hopefully next time it'll be a little bit better music guys um let's go to the lord in prayer this morning and let's just talk about these if you want to open up your app to look at your prayer requests let's just go over a couple of them real quickly ted hartman um, he is not on pain medicines anymore. Everyone go whoop whoop. And um, he's doing well. He gets up. He has physical therapy. He has a physical therapist that comes to his house. Um, but he's doing well. So that's awesome. Guys, Deanna Montgomery, I'm just, you, you, you just need to pray for a silent prayer request. If you were here on Sunday and stuff, Deanna came to the altar and others came up to pray with her. And I just thought it was so beautiful. It was awesome. And we just fervently went. And I, I guys, I, the, the World War I term is so applicable. We got down into the trenches and we went to war um, for that situation. And we are continuing. And I'm, I'm just telling you guys, pray for Deanna Montgomery's silent prayer request. Would you just say, Deanna, right now to the Lord? I know, it don't, don't, I mean, we're not like, we're not going to break out the crystals or the, the monkeys at least in the next, for the next few weeks. Um, I joke, but don't, don't, don't let this wig you out. We, we just, we, what are we, we're going to tell God, God, I don't really know her silent prayer request, but I pray that you will A and B and C. God doesn't need our instructions. He knows the situation better than we could ever understand it, even if we understood it. The Lord knows. We just bring it to him. Lord, I know that Deanna's heart's heavy. I, I know that something's going on. I don't really know what it is. But Lord, would you please, 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 please just work in that situation. Everyone say Deanna to the Lord. Just bring the name to the Lord. Deanna. But Lord, we just bring it to Deanna. Just bring it to you. Um, Debbie Kern, Randy, she's finished She's not, well, tell me, what's going on? What? Every day? Oh, okay. Yeah, I messed that up. I messed that up in my head. Okay, so it is every day, Monday through Friday. Oh, and she's got a week and a half left of this. And then she's going to have a break for how long? Guys, I know that you ask, several of you asked for phone numbers, have asked for, uh, um, um, you know, their physical address to, to send a card and stuff like that. Guys, um, she's right up there near the top of that prayer list, and she needs to be. You need to pray that she doesn't get discouraged. You pray that Randy doesn't get discouraged. You pray that she doesn't get vulnerable and get sick. You need to pray that this is very, 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 very effective. Would you just say Debbie right now and just bring Debbie to the Lord? Lord, we bring you Debbie and we bring you Randy and this whole family. We just bring them to you, but especially, Lord, we bring Debbie to you right now. Would you just have mercy on her? Would you just, just bring about the healing? Would you just, just keep her safe in all of this? Keep her strong, keep her healthy. 
I know that she's, she's getting really tired and probably becoming much, much, much more vulnerable, susceptible to other things. Would you just watch over her, please? In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen. Um, Danny Clark, I've been talking with Danny. Danny, it's the month of May, so you're getting closer. Um, what was that date, like the 13th, 14th? What was that date for your biopsies? Are you, 21st, I, I don't mean biopsy, I meant surgeries. It is, it's the 21st, so it's three weeks from today. Um, three weeks from today. Uh, pray that that's all going to go smooth and swimmingly. Guys, listen, um, I, I, I don't want to ramble too long. I, I've, I've already taken too much time. But I know that a lot of you guys are turning on your TVs and like, man, what's going on at, at our universities? How many of y'all saw the stuff going on on the campus at Bloomington down at IU? And people are like, well, I don't even know if I really even completely understand this. Guys, I, I, there's so much that needs to be said about this because we are talking about biblical things. We're talking about end times kinds of things. Uh, if, if, if I, I, I don't know how to, how to explain it other than this, but I, I will say this. The people of Israel, we are supposed to remember, pray, and love the people of Israel. These are, are God's people. It was, it was through the, the, the lineage and the people of Israel that God would, would send the Christ. And he says that they will be blessed. And because of that, because of that, the world hates them. Has there ever been a people ever, 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 ever in history that have taken it on the chin like the Israelites? Any and every opportunity, the opportunity that the world has to, to go to war and, and just, you know... Uh, bring affliction and pain and grief and sorrow to the Israelites. They do. They do. Please, please be careful. Um, if you have questions, and, and I, I would be so more than glad to talk with you guys about these things, if that doesn't make sense to you, whatever else, I, I know it's like, I don't, even, I don't even get it, you know. All I'm saying is pray for the people of Israel. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. And, and the last thing that we want to do is, you know, throw stones and be hateful. We don't want to do that with anybody, with any people. Amen? All right, good, 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 good. All right. Um, and then you, you see the, the rest of them. Nancy, help me out. Remind me. Becky Brown. Becky Brown. A lot of you guys know Becky Brown. She has a friend. Am I correct? Oh, it's her sister. And they're going to have to Okay, so she's got the skin cancer on both sides of her face, and they went and did the surgery, cut out the cancer, got to the, the good f flesh, the good tissue, whatever else, you know, clean that all up and everything else. The other one was close to the eye, and so they decided to wait, let her heal up a little bit, and they'll do the other surgery at a different point in time. So um, do you remember her name, Becky's sister's name? Oh. Becky's sister, yep, it's perfect. And... Um, it seemed like somebody said that there was one other, and, I, and it's eluding me as well. Was there another one that, that we want to remember to pray for today? All right, guys, listen, we have already prayed for some of these. Let's, let's just finish up in prayer, and then we'll, start, we'll get into our Bible study. Father, thank you, Lord, that we can come together. Thank you for good food. Thank you for good friends. Thank you for our children and uh, the kids that are downstairs. And uh, thank you for the good ways that you're speaking to them and, and, and ministering to them as well. Lord, uh, we, we just lift these concerns to you, Lord. Um, it's an incredible thing to think that you would want to partner with us in this thing called ministry, that you would actually call us to, to pray for different people. Lord, um, you don't need us to move in these people's lives, but you, you call us to do so. It's kind of a mystery. But, Father, we are glad to do so. I know it, 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 it strengthens our love for them and for one another. And for that, Lord, we're, we're grateful but Lord, we do pray that you would be with each concern, each one that's been mentioned, each one that wasn't mentioned, maybe even the ones that, uh, that we're going through, that different ones are going through that's in their minds right now. Lord, even these unspoken silent prayer requests, we just, we just bring before you and we pray that you would help us and move through these. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I'm kind of wrapping things up a little bit today. Um, if you've just been coming to dinner church, uh, if this is your first time or the last few times and stuff, um, that's perfectly fine. There's a, a book in the Bible at the very, very end of our Bibles in the, the New Testament at the very end called the book of Revelations. And in chapters 2 and 3 of this book, Jesus um, 
talks about and writes short messages or short letters to seven different churches. We're going to very, very quickly go back, look at them, do some quick summaries of these things, talk about them a little bit, and um, that's, what we're going to, what, that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, each of these churches, um, they, they, um, the, they have different good things about them, and some of them have some really, really hard things about them that Jesus speaks to them about, quite frankly, uh, and stuff. And the question is, okay, well, what, what, how are we, what are we to take from these things? What, what, what are we to learn? And I know that, and I've said this to you a couple of different times, there have been some Bible scholars out there that have wondered if these seven different churches that's, that's being written about in chapters 2 and 3 maybe represent the church over different periods of time over the past 2,000 years. Because I'm going to tell you very, very plainly, I don't think that that's the case at all. And I don't think there's any really solid evidence anywhere to suggest that. I remember wondering at myself. Um, I think it's fine to wonder about that. But I think, you know, it's very, very clear that that's really not the case. <clears throat> I also know that there have been people that have wondered, well, maybe these different churches represent different regions of the world, different continents and whatever else, sections, regions of the world. And again, I would say, that's, I don't, really don't think that's the case either. The fact is, guys, there were, you know, dozens of churches, you know, in the years immediately following Jesus' ascension up into heaven. And among those dozens and dozens of churches throughout Asia Minor and, and you know, the Middle East and, and, and so forth were these seven churches. Um, um, Ephesus is the church that, that we know, you know, better as the church in Ephesians or the uh, Ephesians. You know, we have a letter in the New Testament called the book of Ephesians. Well, this was about that church, that whole letter was about this this church. So we have seven different churches. Guys, what I think is important for us to, to do with these seven churches is how are we like these churches? What warnings does Jesus give to these churches that I would do really, really well to heed and think about? And what good things are going on in those churches that I would do really, really well to heed and think about? Because the fact of the matter is, guys, Every time I study these, <clears throat> and when I studied them yesterday and today, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, oh yeah, Church of Ephesus, yeah, that, that's, that's really a lot like, like our church. And then I get to the next one and I'm like, oh wow, that's really like our church. Guys, they're all, I think, in, in a lot of different ways, kind of like our church. My goal for me is to memorize all seven of these and to be able to, to say what their pluses and minuses were and be able to rattle them off really, really simple. You know, we have a lot of different kids that have learned um, different things and have put things to, 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 to memory. Um, Ashley's three boys, um, it's no secret. I challenged them. I said, hey, listen, uh, we make really, really good chocolate chip cookies at the Gavin's house, and we really like pizza. And we told them, I said, if all three of you guys learn, you know, all the fruits of the Spirit, we'll, we'll, we'll come and pick you up, and we'll take you out for pizza, and we'll give you guys a whole bunch of cookies. And crying out loud, four days later, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm serious, man. They're like rattling it off like, like, like no-brainer. You have no idea how proud I was of you. And not, not, not just the fact that you would memorize them, but you would teach your younger brothers to do that. That's so awesome. That's it. That's it. Man, we teach each other these things. You know, when you're older, they look up to you. They respect you. When you say, hey, guys, I think we need to memorize these. Not just because Pastor Jessica going to give us cookies. So that's going to be awesome. Um, we, we would do really, really well to memorize these. I want to memorize these churches. And I want to be able to think about them. And when I start acting like a, like a, like a goof or whatever else, and I get detracted, and, and, and God comes to me and, and, and reminds me, hey, Jeff, you know, what about this church? Because that kind of like what you're doing right now, I can look at that and say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. You hear what I'm saying, guys? All right. So let's move through these quickly. The church of Ephesus. This is what it says. You have it right there in your Bibles, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Jesus was very, very specific. Hey, church in Ephesus. You know what? I really appreciate, and I'll notice that's a positive. That's a negative, and that's like an asterisk, which is kind of like, hey, here's your command. This is, 
this is your instruction. This is what you need to do. That's how I, I've labeled these. Pluses, negatives, and asterisks, all right? The pluses. You know what? I really appreciate how hardworking you are. You guys work hard. That's amazing. There are our churches three times your size, and they don't work nearly as hard as you do. You guys are rocking it. Good job. Well done. That's a good thing. You know what? You persevere. Even when people come at you and, and say bad things about you or when you mess up and people want to be really, really quick to point out, oh, oh my lands, you really screwed up or whatever else. You know what? That, that messes with us, right? I mean, that's not easy, right? But the thing of it is, is we're like, yeah, you know what? We did. And we persevere. What's a good definition of perseverance? Who, who's, who's, who's my um, Oxford annotated, you know, uh, dictionary? Uh, person that can give a good definition. Randy, I want to call on you. You're, you're a, a, an old wise guy of the church. Um, what does it mean to persevere? I would say uh, to be obedient and patient. To be obedient and patient, okay? All right, those are a couple good words. Dad, Philip, you got, a, you got another thing for perseverance? What does it mean to persevere? To what? To win out. Good. You know, Dad, um, my thought of perseverance is, you remember when I, when, um, when I was at Grassy Creek Elementary School, we would run the half mile. You remember? And I was really, really good at the half mile. I could beat all the other kids because we had a railroad train track, and I would run up and down those railroad train tracks to go visit people and, and go play out in the woods and all that stuff. And I had to be home by dark. It's like, oh, no, I got to run. You know, so I was good at running. But when I went to junior high school, uh, cross, in cross country, they didn't run the half mile. They ran a two and a half mile. And the thing is, is uh, it would eat my lunch. And then I remember the, the first time the coach said, okay, um, you guys have just finished your, your one mile warm up. Now we're going to run from the corner of the junior high school all the way down um, German Church to Washington Street. And then from Washington Street all the way down where Washington Square is to Midhoffer. And then from Midhoffer all the way down to Prospect. And then from Prospect all the way back to the junior high school. It was exactly five miles. And I remember it absolutely ate my lunch. I was dying at about mile and a half. And we had already done a mile. I remember, you know how your, 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 your ribs hurt? And they ache, and you're going like this, and you get these like these like muscle cramps, and like oh! And I remember the coach um, tipping, and he's like, "Gammon, you you just have to push through this thing. You have got to persevere. You do not stop. You 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 just fight it. You grit your teeth." I remember I I, I was one of our one of my pastor friends uh, started running, and. Um, this, this pastor friend was like, oh, I ran like two and a half miles. It's the furthest I've ever ran in my life. And I said, oh, man. Yeah, I, I remember when I would run, the way that I would persevere, and you're going to laugh at me, uh, but I, I, this is how I would run. I'd go, this little light of, and I would be in, in, in cadence with my jogging. I'm going to let it shine. It's that, that old song that we sang, you know, in kids' church when I was like this high. You know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. All that, you know, I would sing that and I would be thinking about that and I'd just be like, ah, and then suddenly the cramp would go away. That's, to me, what it's like. Dad's laughing at me back there. But that's, that's what, what perseverance, for me, you know, you, you just got to grit and persevere. You, you're going to master it. You're going to master it. Keep on, keep on, keep on. Keep on keeping on. What are you going to say? Uh, steadfastness. steadfastness. Nancy, you want to say something? Okay, all right. So I like that perseverance. I'm taking way too long. I got to speed up. Okay, here's another, here's another positive. We think of the word intolerance as a bad word. That's a lie from the, from the devil. Um, there are things, we're we supposed to tolerate each other, but there are certain things that, that, that we're going to be in, intolerant over. If I see, you know, somebody picking on a, a little girl and, and, and whatever else, whether, whether they're the same age, but especially, especially if it's, it's somebody older or whatever else, yeah, I am not going to tolerate that. I will not tolerate that. I won't tolerate somebody saying, you know, bad things about my wife. Won't, won't, nope, that's not happening. You know, whatever else. Just, we're not going there. 
you know, there are things that are intolerant. These guys were intolerant with people in their church who claimed it to be Christians, and yet they, they lived out false doctrine. And, and they did things, and they said, oh, it's okay to do this. Oh, it's okay to do that. Those kinds of things. These guys, Jesus had good things to say to them. Like, you know what? You don't tolerate that. If you see that sort of stuff, you're going to go to them and say, hey, listen, man, I want better for you. I want better for you. Those things are only going to hurt. I want good things for you. I, I want awesome things for you. And this stuff's going to mess you up. And so I'm coming to you, and I'm talking to you about it, because I, I, I want you to have better things in life. Amen? Do you think that this is important? Jesus pointed it out to them. I think it's huge, important. Here's another thing. You know what? You're doing more now than you did at the beginning. That's awesome. You have not grown weary. If anything, you're running all the harder. Way to go. Good job. There's a lot of good things that Jesus had to say about this church. But there's one big, 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 ugh, that Jesus had to say. And I think it's what we think of when we think of this church. I remember asking the question many different times. Hey, how would you define the church of Ephesus? Three, four, five hands go up. I call on somebody. Well, they're the church that, that, for, that they, they forsook, forsake. They, they had forsaken their first love. There you go. They had forsaken their first love. And Jesus said that. Man, I, you, you're doing great things, but I have one issue, one problem, and that is you have forsaken your first love. Who was their first love? And who should be their first love? God. And the thing is, there was a time in this church where God was number one. Now, here's the thing, guys. Now, listen to me, because this is so huge about this. This, I believe, is the most important thing that, I, that we can say about this church. It's not that God, you know, like they just like said, all right, we're done with God. He's completely out of the picture. That's not, that's not what's going on here at all. What he's saying is, is, you know, at one point, God was number one. But somehow or another, over the course of life and over the course of living, other things got in the way and they got pushed up above God. And guys, I don't, I don't want to like try to guess what that might look like for you, but I do know what it has looked like for me. Popularity. I'm more concerned about being liked. Oh my lands. I hate the immaturity, the, you know, and, and it's not like I'm completely over that. It's like, what's, what's your problem that you have to be liked so much? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just screwed up. But, you know, or, or even like, you know, I, guys, it's the month of May. Do you know what goes on in the month of May? Do you know how excited I am? Guys, I'm going to go home tonight. I'm going to go up in my attic. I'm going to get my Indianapolis Motor Speedway flag out. It's going to be on my thing. And all along the road, there's going to be Indy 500 checkered flags all over the place. I mean, I, and, and you know what? I'm going to have to work really, really late at night because when I can't be at the Motor Speedway, believe me, I'm going to be watching it on Peacock you know, the, the, the practices and everything else. I enjoy that. I love that. Do you think that there have been times when, do you think that there have been times when, when my desire and my ferocity, is that, is that the right way of saying it? Oh, I'm glad. Um, you know, for IndyCar, uh, overseeded my love and my passion and my desire for Jesus. You know, yeah, for like, how old am I, 55? Probably for like 50 years of my life, yeah, right? Sometimes things compete, and, and, and sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, I don't have time to, to help that person, you know, with their spare tire and, and all those things because I got I to gotta get so I can get to the track early and do whatever. You know, I'm just saying, guys, there are times when other things get in the way and they just get in the way. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal those things to us when, when they get in the way. And I, I would just say to you, 
if you if you you feel like God saying something to you, especially in regard to this, I, I would I would stop and, and listen very very carefully. And guys, the, I think the most important thing. Oh, I already said that. I think maybe the second most important thing that I could say to you in regards to this is is this. Um, Lord, I want to love you, and I absolutely want to make you number one in my life, and I think a lot of times you are, but I also think there were a lot of times, you know, oh, and I'm up late, and I finished the bag of Funyuns, and I'm mad, you know, and I tossed my doc, my empty Dr. Pepper bottle across the living room, and I'm shaking my head. I'm like, really? You guys... You guys can't rebound that basketball, you know. Or you know, I joke. I didn't do that at all last night. I didn't even. I didn't even. I, I was asleep at halftime last night. To be honest with you, I was so tired last night. But you know what I'm saying, right? Because I think an awesome prayer is, Lord, I, I want you to be number one. And I think a lot of times you are number one in my life. But there are times, Lord, I know when things get in the way and I get distracted, I get deceived, and and I just get selfish. I just get stupid. Whatever else, Lord, would you please, please, please help me to keep you number one in my life? I pray this in Jesus. His name, amen. That is an awesome prayer. That is like the greatest prayer ever. I'm going to tell you, Jesus was like way down the road, but I was smart enough to sit there and realize, you know what, Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened in my life, and why do I keep dissing him and pushing him further and further away? And then I, I finally got smart enough to the point where like, I, you know, I need Jesus in my life, and I want Jesus in my life. I want him to be number one. I want to obey him completely and fully and totally. And have I arrived? Am I there yet? Shoot, no. I'm not, unfortunately. But oh, my lands, I'm a lot closer than I was, you know, five years ago. Crying out loud, guys, I'm a lot closer than I was three weeks ago. Because he's just doing these moving things. And if we allow him to do it, he'll do it. But he's, he's not a dictator, and he's not somebody who's going to like sit there and say, you better follow me. I mean, he gives us the choice. He gives us the choice. It's our choice. Guys, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have a misconception, and I'm sorry I'm going long, but I'm not sorry at all because I really feel like this is right and this is good. And, and we'll, we'll finish up. We, we still got weeks. We, we got plenty of time to finish these, the review on these things. But guys, I'm going to tell you something. Um, Jesus isn't like some dictator that's going to sit there and say, you follow me or else. Guys, I'm going to tell you, heaven is the presence of God. Hell is the absence of God. That's all it is. And I'm going to tell you, you don't want to be in a place where there's the absence of God. And you may be young, so young, that you don't know what, 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 what America was like 55 years ago. Well, I was just born 55 years ago, okay? So I don't remember a whole lot. But I do remember what it was like 40, 45 years ago. And believe me, it's a whole lot different than what it's looked like over these last 20 years. And the comparison is horrible, horrible, horrible. It's night and day different. Crying out loud, 60% of the people in America today are on antidepressants or, or, you know, other kinds of medications and this and that and everything else. And, oh, you know, oh, we have everything. I'm the happiest of you. Liar, you're so not happy. You know, I mean, just look around, you know. Anyway, I digress a little bit. Maybe a tick. But, yes, yes, Randy, I'm sorry. Drew, I'm so sorry, my friend. Did I, did I miss you? Good, I hope. We need a joke that got really serious and heavy for uh, in a quick. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Dude, that's so awesome. So, what do you do when it rains? You just have to go out there and clean it and do it over again. Yeah, that's all right. That's why I have a wife. She can help me. So, <laughs> dude, that's awesome, man. Seriously, seriously, that's awesome, man. That's absolutely. So, so Brian, Brian lives almost across the street from me, and he goes nuts. But the thing of it is, is, dude, I was the first. I was the first, and now I've got like six or seven other neighbors, and they all. So when you like go through my little section of the neighborhood, you've seen this, right? Man, it looks like like I've already got other neighbors that are, have their stuff out, and I'm like, yeah, copycats or whatever else. But it's fun, right? And the thing of it is, that we do those things. I, I, I and that's great. That's all great and fine. But I want to tell you something. I want, I want my neighbors to copycat me in other ways as well. A whole lot more than, 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 than those things. I want them to say, man, what's up with Jeff? Man, he's, wow, man, he's, he's just, you know, gotten 
beaten on, you know, and, and yet, wow, wow. And the problem is, is when I get so distracted that my demeanor isn't that way. Where the neighbors are like, man, what's up with Jeff? He's just, oh, you hear what I'm saying? Oh, oh. You know what, Lord? You're first and foremost. It's okay. You, you, you have your hands on the wheel. I can't steer it. Oh, this church. I mean, we could spend a month. I mean, we did spend a month, didn't we? And here I am spending another month. Smyrna. Wow. Guys, this is one of two churches that really were, like, quite amazing. But was this church perfect? I'll point out something. If you know it, I would love for you to point it out. Um, because what you see there are um, a whole bunch of negatives and one positive, and there's no asterisk. So what were the negatives in regards to Smyrna? Hey, you know what? I can tell that you are incredibly afflicted. People are always afflicting you. They're throwing stuff at you. They're dogging you. Your life is hard. You know, you're trying to follow Christ, and because you're following Christ, there's a whole lot of affliction that's coming Pastor Jeff, is that normal? Man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, my, my, my friend, gosh, I forgot your name. Justin, you're just going to have to forgive me. Brian's been my friend for like 40-some years, and, and I'll call him Matthew. Um, I, could not, I could not even introduce my grandparents one time to the superintendent when I was a ministry student because I just get flustered. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just flustered, so forgive me. Anyway, John, I appreciate your, 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 no, I'm just kidding. So, um, I hate to say this to you. I mean, I don't know if you've, if you've been to church. I don't know if you've read the Bible. I don't know any of this stuff, but there's a lot of people that would probably want to lie to you and say, Hey, listen, man, you become a Christian and, and you serve Jesus, man, your life will be like smooth, salient, awesome, wonderful, glorious, whatever else. No, the Bible doesn't say that at all. The Bible doesn't say that at all. If anything, by following Christ, there'll be a lot of people that will be really pretty annoyed with you and not like you. And the thing of it is, is your heart will change and you'll grow to love people like, like, like you've never loved them before. And you'll be blessed in a billion different ways. But as far as like the way the world treats you, yeah, dude. Um, I mean, you probably already see it. Churches get bad raps all the time. Man, that pastor, what a jerk. You know, I mean, all that sort of, sorts of stuff. Um, this is what I'm talking about. You know, afflicted. Man, pa oh, my lands, people love to throw stones. Pa oh, my lands, you see what the pastor did? If it was anyone else, it wouldn't even it wouldn't even been brought up in a sentence. You know, but oh, it's the pastor. You know, and I get it. I do. I get it. I get it. Absolutely. It makes sense. But this church was afflicted. This church was poor. They had no money. You would think, oh, oh man, they're, they're, they're Christians now. God, why don't you throw them a bone? Help them to become wealthy. Well, you know what? Maybe God didn't want them to be wealthy because if they became wealthy, then they would have all these temptations and then suddenly they wouldn't be living for the Lord the way they were living. It was easier for them to, to live in you know, poverty but to live solid you know, for, the, for the Lord than for them to, to have a lot of wealth and, and be all wishy-washy and all over the place spiritually. There, there's all kinds of things. You know, you're being slandered all the time. Oh, my lands, guys, if you you have not realized the church, people love to slander the church. People love to slander Christians. People love to slander pastors. You know, people love to slander anyone who, who, who believes in the Bible, stands up for the Bible, all of those kinds of things. This was happening to them. And he, Jesus goes on. He says, hey, listen, I understand all this, but listen, I should probably let you know, you're probably going to be tested. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be testing you and stuff. And and, and, and as a, a form of, of being tested, you're going to feel really, really persecuted for a period of time. But you stay faithful. You stay faithful. And you know what? If you stay faithful, you're going to receive the crown of life. 
And here's the other thing, and I, I, I say this. It's kind of funny. I, don't, I really don't think a week goes by that I don't say this to somebody. I, I love to, 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 to share Bible passages. There's a Bible passage. There's a verse in the Bible that says our momentary trials that we're going to experience on this earth won't even be worth mentioning or even bringing up or even be worth considering compared to the glory that we're going to experience when, when, when the things of this world and this earth are done and, and you know we're going to be in the Lord's kingdom and stuff. It's like, you know, Lord used all of these kinds of things to, to, to help keep me and, and get me to, to the place where I would be open and, and listening to him. And that might seem kind of hard and harsh and stuff, but I'm going to tell you, 90% of this is self-inflicted anyway. But you might say, well, wouldn't he spare us of a lot of these kinds of things? You know what, guys? I would, um, I don't even know how to, what, what analogy. I wish I could come up with a really quick analogy. But, well, I, I use the analogy this way in the past. You know, I, I, could, I could spend my $20 and stuff at the, the county fair. And um, how far will $20 go at the county fair? Not very far, you know. Oh, but I have my $20. Or I could take my $20 and go to King's Island for the day and ride rides all day long and stuff. Nah, that Maybe that didn't even apply. But anyway, I think you're getting what I'm saying here. Guys, here's the thing. We keep Jesus first. Whether our lives and we're as blessed as can be or you know what, you have a hairline like mine and you're ADD like me. Uh, yeah, God blesses you with the most wonderful wife you know that's ever been given to anyone. Um, that's great, but... You know what, even if you have all kinds of struggles and trials and problems and everything else, you, you just keep looking to the Lord. You persevere. You, you, even if people have bad things to say, even if your neighbors call you jerks and, you know, call you a jerk and everything else, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You, you continue and you just remain faithful. And he's going to be there. He'll pick you up and he'll dust you off and he'll help you through there. And I'm not going to say that your life's going to be horrible. It might be challenging. But I want to tell you, our lives are just a, a blip, just a dot in comparison to what, what awaits for all of eternity. That's what he's talking about here. We're going to move on. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to try to hit the next four next week. Let's talk for a moment about Pergamum. This is the third church um, in um, Revelation chapter 2. He has a negative thing to say, two positive things to say, a negative thing to say, and then he gives them some... Uh, some instructions. Here's the negative thing. Um, where you live, yeah, you're pretty much right there in the center of where Satan lives. Now, I don't know where Satan lives, right? But there are certain places I can think of, maybe around the United States, where I would not want to live. Um, I remember when Amy and I went to Las Vegas for four days on vacation, I got to play golf in the middle of winter on beautiful Bermuda grass. I got to eat some of the most awesome food. And you know, I'm a foodie. I love the food and everything. The lights were absolutely amazing and all this stuff. But I have never seen so many like nudie, like posters, flyers, signs, and everything else under the sun. And all of the rest of the debauchery that was there, I just, I, I couldn't stomach it. I would love, we went and we saw Circus Olay Caw, which was like one of the greatest shows I'd ever seen in my life. But I really don't know if I could ever really go back there. It, it's like Satan lives there. Um, I, I, I don't know if I could live in New Orleans because I'm kind of afraid maybe Satan lives there. I don't know. I, I you know, there, there's certain places where I'm just like, yeah, I, I just don't need that. I don't, and yet, the place where they lived, there was all kinds of messed upness going on there. All kinds of messed upness. He says, and despite living right there in the midst of all that messed upness, you continue to live true to my name. You have not renounced my name. You have not renounced my faith. You continue to say, you know what? I don't care. Despite all of the stuff that's going on all around us, Jesus is Lord, and I'm going to follow him, and his word is truth, and um, he has better things than all this worldly nonsense that's, that's re wreaking havoc on everybody's lives around them. You hear what I'm saying? That's what he says to this church. But there is one problem. 
and that's this. And I hope you'll, you'll begin to recognize and see that this is important to Jesus. Because we don't see this just in one church or even in two churches. We, Jesus kind of says this in multiple churches. He says, the problem is, is you allow those among you, there are those among you who call themselves part of the church. There are those among you who call themselves Christians who follow ungodly teachings and practices. Well, what am I supposed to do about that? That's a big question, isn't it? Hey, Pastor Jeff, we live in a world today and we live in a society today where you let people be them and you be you. You want to be hated and disliked and everything else quicker than anything else. You sit there and you go and you, you tell somebody, hey, you know, God's got a better way of life for you. No, you, you can't do that today. And what I am telling you is the Bible says otherwise. You have a brother, you have a sister. I remember when Brian Hartman came and said, Jeff, you've been acting like a jerk and it's time for you to stop. You shouldn't be acting like this. He came to me, he said it to me gently, lovingly. I appreciated that. I needed that. There have been times when I have gone to others and I've said gently, my friend, I love you, but I need to tell you some things. I need to share some things with you. You can't do that, Pastor Jeff. And I am so grateful for those who would, and, and guys, is it humbling? Is there anything more humbling? It's horribly humbling. But the thing of it is, guys, we're all fools. I mean, I, I sit there and I, I, I say all the time, Justin, I, 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 I do, there's a phrase, it was a, professor friend of mine in grad school and he would say um jeff you need to know something about me i am just one beggar trying to show other beggars where to find food and i would really really counsel you if you go into ministry to have that same attitude because you're a jerk just like i am and i'm like oh yeah you're right i am and we all are we are all pretty messed up dysfunctional screw it up mess it up whatever even my lovely mom you know, she has been known to err at least three times in her life that, 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 have, that have been documented by my dad. I should say, no, I'm just kidding, dad. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, dad. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, that's, that's such an amazing perspective. And you are talking about one of the hardest things in the world. I mean, we are trying to, to minister to all kinds of different people. You know, I, I love the, the, the phrase, hey, come as you are. And, and I love that. That's exactly right. Come as you are. Man, I don't care what kind of background, history, whatever you have going on in your life, you are welcome to come in here and hear the truth, hear the truth. But there's, there's a problem when, 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 when someone comes in and they get to that place where they say, all right, well, I'm a believer and I'm following to Jesus and I, I'm doing all of these things. And, 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 and it's not like that. I'm not saying it's, it's not like, um, oh, my lands, you messed up, didn't you? Well, you can no longer be in the church. That's not what, what this is saying at all. But what this is saying is, you know, when you become a member of the church and a follower of the church and you claim to have Christ in your lives and you're studying and you're learning the Bible and stuff, and then you come and you try to say something is, is okay, 
it's fine for me to practice this and do this and, and everything else, even though the Bible says very, very much that, no, that's, that's, that's a not a good thing. If, if you are angry, well, I have a righteous anger. It doesn't matter. You, 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 can, you, you, can, you can be frustrated and whatever else, and you can be disappointed, but you cannot like, become to the point where you're allowing your anger to, to boil over where you're just losing control and stuff. That, that, that's a hard thing, especially if your last name is Gammon and you happen to be a guy, you know? Um, you know, and it's been that way for generations. And, you know, poor old Matthew, he's trying to figure out all these things as well. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's true. It, it, there, people are, are welcome to come in and you, you don't want to welcome somebody in and say, hey, it's okay, all of these things that you're going on. I, I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is teaching people the truth. I don't want to sit there and look at somebody's life and say, well, you're doing this wrong and you're doing that wrong and you're doing that wrong. Do you want to know why I don't like doing that? Because they can just look at me and say, yeah, Pastor Jeff, you want to know what? You're doing it this wrong and you're doing that wrong and you're doing that wrong. And I'm like, yep, you're right. So why would I? Why would I do that? People have eyes to see. Um, you guys don't know me very well, but you've known me probably long enough to recognize. You know, uh, wow, Jeff really. You know, I mean, he, he's he's not afraid to, you know, say you know how he is. I'm like, well, you know what? Why would I? Because you're going to figure it out anyway. You know, you can ask the young couple behind you. They've been coming for like two years, two plus years or whatever else. And, you know, we hang out. We, we, we went to King's Island and almost flipped a, a, a wooden log thing. It was fun. But they, they, they know well, I'm not going to be able to hide those things. Why, why even attempt? Why even attempt? But what I will say is, you know what? I know what the truth is and I am striving for that truth. I'm never going to sit there and say, hey, you know what? I, I know the truth, and it's not what the Bible says. It's actually this and this and this. There's a problem there. That's what was going on here. Y'all y'all get that? You see the difference there? Any pushback, any feedback, any thoughts on that? I, I welcome it. It's fine. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there's that worldly pressure that's going on right now. And there are a ton of churches. Guys, I'm going to tell you. And, and, and there's a Bible passage. And I'll close. Oh, golly. I'm, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. Yeah. Pastor, there's school tomorrow. I can get my kid in bed. I'll, I'll say this. Let's put a Bible verse to it. Let's put a Bible verse to it. Because what you said is true. And the thing of it is, is there are Bible verses that, that said that this was going to happen. You know, in the last days, people will, will not put up with sound doctrine anymore. Instead of, of, of seeking out sound doctrine, people will go and they will go to churches and find people who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear, quote unquote. And that is the case. Guys, you can go to any church out there and cry out loud. You want to smoke pot and, and worship the, co the, the God of um, oh, marijuana, whatever the other word is. Yeah. What are you, you, know, you all know that. You've seen it on TV. Just go down to Indianapolis. You can find the church that will tell you that it's okay to go do that. You want to go out and, and be able to, I, I'm, I'm not going to go there. But yeah, you, but I'm going to tell you guys, there's, what, what, what good is it believing a lie? You know, if, I, oh, the meteorologist is lying again. <laughs> He's lying. There's not going to be a Category 5 hurricane coming. I don't need to board up the, the, the doors and the windows. I don't need to get my furniture up off the lawn and, out and off the first floor. I don't need to evacuate mom and the kids and my wife and stuff. It's all good. Uh, he, he's, just, he's just lying. At the very least, he's, he's over-exaggerating. You, know you know how those meteorologists, what good is it to believe a lie? Especially when the hurricane comes and totally wipes out everything and you're left with nothing. Hear what I'm saying? Guys, uh, for those who have ears to hear, that's a Bible term. For those who have ears to hear, let them hear. I, 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 I pray that, that the things you heard tonight will resonate. Guys, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about this again next week. I, 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 just, I, can't, I can't get over this. I, I, I know. We, we've, been, we've spent probably four months looking at this and I'm like so cool and fine with that. We, I just want to review this one more time. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to continue. We'll start with Church 4. If you want these notes, just email me, text me. Hey, Jeff, send them to such and such and such. I'll send them. I love it when I see phones out. People are taking pictures of the screen. That's great. I do that all the time when I'm in meetings uh, and stuff. But you can do that. 
Also, check out the, the church app. Get familiar with it. Um, definitely do the seed bed thing in the morning. It's called the morning wake up call. Should be you should be able to find a new one every day, every seven days a week on your phone. Usually by about seven seven thirty in the morning. Can I pray with you and I'll let you go, Father? I pray that these kids will go home and go to sleep really really quick, and that there will be no issues and that they'll wake up so refreshed, and that they'll have the best day ever. And the moms and the dads will be like, wow. How come our kids, oh, it's because we went to church last night. And Jeff, yeah, Lord, I just pray it to be so. And Father, if there's anything that just didn't make sense, I just pray that you would just speak to us and help these things to resonate in our ears and our minds and help us to make sense of these things. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. You guys are awesome. I have, you have no idea how much I love you guys and how much I appreciate you guys being.